if I can get the lid off. Whew. That was difficult. <laughs> Hello, vintage neighbors. Welcome to the Vintage Girl Next Door. My name is Lacey. Today we are in the kitchen and we are testing out a vintage gadget. I'm so excited. A wonderful subscriber sent this to me and unfortunately I don't know who it was. Uh, it was shipped directly from eBay. So thank you, whoever you are. I was so excited to receive this wonderful gift the ice o mat ice crusher the box says it's an ideal gift confirmed this is true <laughs> so it looks to be new old stock meaning it has not been used it came new in the box it has the instructions with it the brand is rival it looks to be late 50s possibly very early 60s and it has two different options you can have fine or coarse chopped ice very cool very gadgety there's also a bracket on the back where you can mount it to the wall and the hardware is in there as well so i may end up doing that maybe in my downstairs kitchen we shall see Let's take a closer look at this gadget. Let's read the instructions and see what we need to do. Combination table and wall model ice crusher. Your handsome new ISO mat combines fresh new styling, speedy efficiency, and two-way convenience. Use it as a wall model ice crusher or as a portable table model. Either way, you can have crushed ice whenever and wherever you wish. To crush. Raise the cover, drop ice cubes in the hopper, close the cover and rest your hand on the top of the unit while crushing the ice. For fine ice, turn handle clockwise. For coarse ice, turn it counterclockwise. No adjustments to make. If the ice wedges in the cutters, reverse the handle slightly and then continue crushing. There is also, from Rival, a juice mat juice extractor, isomatic electric ice crusher. Ooh. So this is the iso mat. You gotta do manual crushing. There's also an isomatic that is electric. Very cool. And there's some instructions on how to install it on the wall, how to use it on the table, which is what we are going to do today. Note, specially designed stainless steel blades do all the work. The double action blades with multiple cutting surfaces afford smoother, easier operation. Jumbo capacity ice cup holds a full tray of crushed ice. Wonderful, because I have a full tray of ice cubes. I'm super excited to test this out, and I thought the perfect way to test the ice crusher would be to make some vintage 1950s style cocktails. What else do we need crushed ice for, right? <laughs> In my recent thrift haul, you would have seen this lovely book, Trader Vic's Book of Food and Drink. I am taking some of Trader Vic's recipes for cocktails and we are going to make them today. I have never been much of an alcohol drinker, so today I am doing non-alcoholic versions of these cocktails. However, the recipe would work either way. Obviously, it is meant for alcohol. I'm trying it with a non-alcoholic version. We will see how it goes. And before I get started, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning library thousands of classes. So there was actually a class on crafting your own cocktails. So you know I had to take that one in preparation for today's video. So the class I found was Cocktail Secrets, Making Your Signature Drink, and that is taught by Ivy Mix, and it was very helpful and very interesting to learn about. I I'm very new when it comes to the art of cocktail making, and so I found it very helpful and also interesting and fun to watch. So whether you are looking to fend off boredom or focus on self-care through creativity, or if you just want to join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership. After that, it's only around $10 a month. 
All right, we have taken a look at the isomat. I think it is time to test out this gadget. So luckily, my fridge did come with some of the original ice trays. So we're gonna use one of those. I hope that I can get the ice out of it. This ice tray is It's very neat, has the logo right there. Same as my refrigerator. Let's see if we can get this out. Oh, not too bad. The first drink that we will make is a classic Trader Vic Mai Tai. So it calls for crushed ice. Step one. So we'll put our ice cubes in the hopper. A few cubes in. I think I'm just going to set it on this cutting board so that it is nice and stable. Directions, we close the hopper, hold our hand on it. We are making, we'll do coarse first. Fine ice, turn the handle clockwise, coarse ice, counterclockwise. Got it. Okay, we'll do coarse ice first. Okay, so far, That's not too hard. Kind of hard, but not bad. It looks like it worked. Let's see. I'll take the hopper off, push the sides. I mean, that looks pretty professionally crushed to me. Looks great. I need 12 ounces of crushed ice, so we gotta keep crushing. Well, let's do this. Okay. Oh my goodness, you guys, it is like 85 degrees in my house right now. So I'm real excited to try these, these drinks with the ice dying. Okay, next round, let's do this. So it got kind of jammed. I went backwards and forwards and then it was good. It takes a little bit of force, but not bad. Like I can totally handle this. <laughs> that I think is gonna be the perfect amount get our shaker. Here is my glass for the Mai Tai. Just make sure we've got the right amount of ice. I feel like that is perfect. So into the shaker it goes. Okay for this recipe we are using one half ounce orange carousel. I got that on Amazon as well so I can link it for you. A quarter ounce or or geet. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. That is also on Amazon. And a quarter ounce simple syrup. And three quarter ounce lime juice. And listen, I didn't have a one of those juicer, like handheld juicer squeezer things. <sighs> I, yeah. It was, it was rough. For the rum, I have this Liars Spiced Cane Spirit, impossibly crafted non-alcoholic spirits. I found this on Amazon. I will link it for you in the description if you are interested. But of course, 
you can use alcoholic regular rum. Doesn't smell too bad. So I am adding two ounces of the rum. Let us give it a shake. Get it nice and chilled. Ugh, why is that so hard? Okay. Now the authentic Trader Vic recipe you garnish with a half of the spent lime and some mint. However, I liked the idea of a maraschino cherry and a pineapple. Here we have it, our classic Trader Vic's Mai Tai, non-alcoholic version. I think it looks good. Let's taste it and see how we feel. Mmm, this is good. I wasn't sure what to expect from the non-alcoholic rum, but to be honest, I think it's really good. I mean, obviously it's different than actual rum, but if you're looking for a non-alcoholic alternative, highly recommend. Cheers. And I must say, this ice is masterfully crushed. Perfect size pieces. Love it. 10 out of 10, recommend Trader Vic's original Mai Tai recipe. Another drink I thought it would be fun to make is Betty Draper herself's drink of choice, the Gimlet. Let's try it. Hence the outfit, by the way. I was going for a Betty Draper Mad Men look. This dress totally reminds me of the one she wore, I think it's in the first episode of the first season of Mad Men, where she drinks Gimlets. Well, let's do this again. Maybe this time I will try the fine crushed ice setting. It doesn't really matter because I'm shaking it in the shaker, but whatever. We'll try it for science. First of all, we got to crush some more ice. And I am putting in a few more cubes this time. Okay. Here we go. We're going this way for the finely crushed ice. And I tried turning it the like counterclockwise way, which we found out uh, that I just got mixed up with the directions, and this is actually the way for the coarse ice, and I already did the way for the finely chopped ice, so my bad. Looking good. Okay, I feel like maybe I did it wrong because this looks coarser. This looks more coarse than the other way. Did I do it wrong? Do I know counterclockwise from clockwise? It's a good question. <laughs> no, clockwise. That's what I did the first time. I'm confused. Hmm. Well, okay. Either way. Yeah, this is definitely more coarse. I don't know. Let's do a few more. This is clockwise. Yeah, and that looks better. All right, time to juice some more limes. The gimlet calls for one full ounce of lime juice. 
You better believe I bought one of those juicers after this. Okay, we finally, we finally have our lime juice. Hallelujah. I am using Ritual Zero Proof Gin Alternative. I got this on Amazon as well, which I will link for you if you are interested. And one and a quarter ounces of gin. And a teaspoon of sugar. We're gonna shake it and strain into a glass. Let us taste the non-alcoholic gimlet. To be 100% honest with you, I don't know that I've ever tasted actual alcoholic gin, but this is not bad. Has a lot of lime, which I like, <laughs> but also has kind of like a piney flavor with the gin. It's refreshing. I like this one. Betty Draper knew what she was talking about. For two for two, guys, as like a sweet drink, I do you like the Mai Tai, but as like a refreshing, like sa more sour, tangy drink, this one's good. Last drink on the menu. I thought we did Betty Draper's drink, so we would do Don Draper's drink. However, I'm gonna do it with a Trader Vic twist. So, as you may know, Don Draper's drink of choice is the old-fashioned, and that is normally made with a bourbon. However, we are using Trader Vic's recipe and making a rum old-fashioned. And this one just actually calls for two big lumps of ice, so I'm not going to crush the ice this time. We're just going to use the cubes as is. Here is the recipe we're going off of for Trader Vic's version of the old-fashioned Starting out with a lump of sugar. And then a dash of Angostura bitters. And it was kind of like not really coming out. So I ended up adding some more dashes because to get to what I thought a dash should be. So I'm really not positive on that. <laughs> and then some charged water, enough to dissolve the sugar. Then adding in one and a half ounces of rum and a large lump of ice, <laughs> or the best I had. My ice cubes, I mentioned it was really hot in here. My ice cubes <laughs> definitely uh, melted a little. Not much going on here. We'll let's see, let's see what we think. It's not bad. Mostly it just tastes like the rum. <laughs> so there's that. I mean, this probably is my least favorite out of the three, but there's just not a lot going on here. So that's probably why. <laughs> I think I prefer Betty's drink over Dawn's drink, but to each their own. There we have it. The gadget worked like a charm. Let's give it a rating. So first of all, for aesthetic, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to give it a 4.5. It's very cute. It has like the nice gold and chrome going on. It is very sleek design. I like the box. The font on the box is very cute. So I do like it for the mid-century aesthetic purpose for sure. Next, efficiency. How did it do? I'd say pretty dang well. It crushed the ice very evenly. Like I was 
very impressed, especially with the first drink for the Mai Tai. That crushed ice looked gorgeous. It was perfect, exactly what I wanted it to be. And it wasn't super hard. I was worried that I was gonna have to like really crank that handle. It wasn't too bad. It did get stuck for a second, but then it says to go the other way and then reset. Totally worked to do that. Efficiency, I'm gonna say yeah, it did what it said it was gonna do. It did it well. It did it quite easily. The only other thing would be if it was automatic, electric. So, I mean, you can't dock it for that. It is what it is. I'm gonna say five out of five on this one. A special thank you again to whoever sent me this wonderful vintage gadget. I am so grateful to you. It means the world to me that you would think to send me something at all, much less something so amazing. So thank you again for that. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check the description for and use my link. Listen, I know I'm not a professional at this. I am very new to bartending. This was my first foray. <laughs> so please don't judge me too harshly. I did my best and I had fun. That's what matters, right? Also, don't forget, coming up on June 20th is the longest day live stream. I'm going to be live streaming here on YouTube. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for that and make sure that you join me to shine a light on Alzheimer's awareness on behalf of my sweet grandma Dorothy. I'm going to do what I can to try to raise awareness for Alzheimer's and I would love for you to join me. So if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out and I sure appreciate it. If you are new and you have not subscribed already, please do so. We would love to have you stick around as a part of our vintage neighborhood for more of our vintage fun. And I hope that you are safe and well and feeling loved wherever you are in the world. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.